Today on Fast Food Origins we are going to talk about the origin of Captain D's. But before we get started be sure to subscribe to the Fast Food Origins channel and let us know in the comments below what fast food restaurant origins you would like to know more about. So let's get right into it. You've probably encountered a Captain D's at some point in your life. There are more than 500 eateries spread throughout more than 20 states. Although this fast food company with a concentration on seafood was established in 1969, it is currently expanding quickly across the country. Based on system-wide sales of an estimated $562 million and annual unit volume of $1.5 million, Captain D's announced in 2020 that QSR Magazine had named their brand the top seafood franchise restaurant for the year, placing it far ahead of other significant seafood fast casual restaurants like Long John Silver's. Captain D's was able to make that much money in system-wide sales in the United States despite a pandemic that proved disastrous for some restaurants. A brand new restaurant idea that might keep Captain D's open for a very very long time will be introduced in late 2020, indicating that the corporation has no plans to slow down its growth. We might be getting ahead of ourselves, though. What factors contributed to Captain D's success and how did it begin? Here is where Captain D's came from. Captain D's hasn't always been Captain D's. To begin with, Captain D's wasn't always Captain D's. Actually, Mr. D's was the original name of the chain of restaurants. According to Captain D's, the name Captain wasn't added until 1974, a full five years after the restaurant opened its doors in 1969. But don't imagine that the Captain D's brand originated from some unassuming, family-run restaurant that simply benefited from good fortune and marketing, according to a Funding Universe biography. This eatery has had corporate origins its whole existence. The original Mr. D's restaurant, which debuted on August 15, 1969 in Dolson, Tennessee, was built by the Nashville-based Danner Foods, Inc. Big Boy restaurants owned by Danner Foods are well known throughout the southeast of the country. When Danner Foods decided to expand its business by opening a brand new seafood restaurant in the late 1960s, the publicly traded firm was well positioned to do so. As a result, Mr. D's was born. It's not surprising that the restaurant idea survived to see its initial rebranding in 1974 when the name changed to Captain D's because this Captain D's predecessor had the funding and management necessary to make it a success from the start. Even though Mr. D's did indeed start out as a seafood restaurant, it was still much different from the Captain D's establishments of today. First off, the chain's full name was Mr. D's Seafood and Hamburgers, and its specialty was still seafood on a budget, as the Captain's D's of today reveals. The menu also includes non-seafood things like those hamburgers, which you won't find on a Captain D's menu nowadays, as the original moniker may have already suggested. The restaurant's theme was also quite unique. While the restaurant's facade and interior did not give off the same seafood shack vibe as today's Captain D's franchises, the signage featured a joyful chef atop an equally happy fish. Instead, the decor was reminiscent of a family-run restaurant from the 1970s, with lots of brown tile, wood-paneled walls, and dining tables that weren't all that far from those you might find in a typical dining room in a house. However, the appearance was short-lived as Captain D's completely embraced the nautical theme when it also changed its name in 1974. Captain D's added drive through windows and furthered its brand repositioning in the 1990s, but such measures were unable to totally shield Captain D's from the effects of declining seafood consumption. According to Funding Universe, per capita seafood consumption decreased from 15 pounds in 1989 to 14 pounds in 1992. Why, therefore, did the eatery observe such a glaring decline in the general public's desire for seafood in such a brief period of time? First off, during this time, it wasn't always simple for Captain D's to purchase seafood from its regular suppliers. This was due to the fact that some fish species were in short supply and that foreign suppliers had started to push their way onto the market. For popular restaurant species like sole, scallops, and cod, shortages led to high prices. This was undoubtedly a serious problem for a franchise restaurant like Captain D's, which advertised its inexpensive menu. On the other hand, if Captain D's maintained its pricing too low, customers might be concerned about the source of the fish and the caliber of it. However, as a pending court dispute would demonstrate, it wasn't simply the price of cod that would pose difficulties for the seafood chain in this decade. In 1992, Captain D's had to deal with both a costly litigation and a decline in seafood sales. Shoney Zing Captain D's parent business at the time was reportedly had to pay $105 million to resolve a racial discrimination case, according to an AP News report from November of that year. Nine black workers at Shoney's and Captain D's restaurants claimed in the lawsuit that they were subjected to discrimination by their employers between 1988 and 1991. The chain was accused of discriminatory practices in the recruiting, firing, and promotion procedures, as well as of harassing and retaliating against people who complained. 
Shonizing, was compelled to examine its hiring procedures and raise the proportion of black employees it employed in addition to making the settlement money. According to Funding Universe, Shonies and Captain D's were severely in debt as a result of the case and were compelled to sell off assets. All of its branded chains were included in the aforementioned assets, with the exception of the Captain D's and Shoney's restaurants. Making the restaurants smaller overall was a novel idea that Captain D's discovered in the 2000 seconds that would save money and boost earnings. And when Captain D's made the decision to scale back, they really went for it, reducing the size of each location's conventional restaurant by around two-thirds. The new, smaller Captain D's restaurants that debuted in 2001 could only accommodate 42 diners, as opposed to the original, larger locations that could accommodate approximately 128 customers. Each restaurant's square footage was reduced from 3,250 square feet to 1,800 square feet, drastically altering both the physical footprint and undoubtedly the dining experience at a Captain D's franchise. Despite what could appear to be a sharp decline, the adjustment really has many advantages, as Funding Universe reveals. First of all, compared to their foreigners, smaller restaurants were easier and quicker to construct, and their equipment and furnishing expenses were far lower. With fewer workers, the redesigned kitchen nevertheless provided enough of service and throughput. The brand might appear in places like strip malls because the smaller restaurants could fit into more sites. This benefit was essential for Captain D's subsequent move, which involved entering uncharted territory in order to eventually take the brand global. When Captain D's adopted its smaller restaurant size, it made it possible for additional sites to be established in previously forbidden areas, such on remote army outposts. According to Funding Universe, Captain D's built its first army base restaurant at the Californian Travis Air Force Base in 2001. As Captain D's became a more popular alternative on army bases and the opportunity to expand sites at the roughly 150 military exchange food courts became a reality, this would eventually open the door for new locations. The change also made it possible for Captain D to launch its first ever foreign site at the Japanese air base of Okinawa. Beyond the sites of Captain D's foreign military bases, however, it appears as though the company is continuing its focus on domestic markets, with more than 20 target growth states across the country and a heavy emphasis on the Midwest and South. As of 2021, there are just 14 states where the brand is absent. Although the increase in restaurant size appeared to be benefiting the brand, not all of Captain D's ventures in the 2000 seconds were a success. A big fishtail would appear in an advertisement for Captain D's that was broadcast on television in 2008 any time an actor made a bad eating choice. The diner would then be forcefully smacked by the fishtail in an attempt to make a joke. A burger-eating office worker receives a punch. A husband who brings his wife a box of pizza is hit. After everyone has been sufficiently pummeled, a Captain D's meal is served by the disembodied fishtail. To put it mildly, the advertisement received poor reviews. A writer for One Nation's Restaurant News described the fishtail as an aggressive sea monster, adding that it was almost unpleasant to witness the brutality depicted in the commercials. The fishtail's creator even acknowledged that despite his best efforts to make the tail slap friendly, several of the actors who starred in the commercials still left the set with sore jaws and red faces as a result of the vigorous slapping. Ultimately, despite the brand's fairly brilliant decision to downsize its locations and its less well-liked advertising campaign, Captain D's wasn't doing well in the 2000 seconds. According to QSR magazine, the brand experienced 0% same-store sales growth from around 2003 to 2011, which is not good news for the restaurant. However, Captain D's would turn things around when it revamped both its appearance and menu during 2011 and 2012, leading to its largest ever same-store sales growth in 2012. The new design transformed Captain D's from a depressingly blue seaside seafood shack with worn docking to a vibrant cafe with only a few nautical nods here and there, like the bright red fish on the chain signage and the occasional porthole-inspired accent. In terms of the menu, Captain D's updated its well-known fried fish item, introduced new products that resembled fish sticks, and started providing grilled and broiled options. Even better, the restaurant added more upscale menu items like steak and salmon. All of the adjustments made Captain D's future seem more promising. Customers are becoming more and more worried about the origins of the food that restaurants serve, especially when it comes to the sometimes dubious seafood business. The unfortunate reality is that you might want to steer clear of a few items on the Captain D's menu if you're attempting to consume seafood in a slightly more sustainable manner. While some of Captain D's products come from perfectly ecological sources, some are a little more dubious. The majority of Captain D's seafood is wild Alaskan cod. In order to prevent congestion in the net, the fish are caught using high-tech fishing boats with cameras that monitor the fish in the nets. The fish is then transported to Captain D's after being frozen in an Alaskan plant. 
You would probably prefer this wild-caught cod to some of the other fish in the restaurant in terms of sustainability. Catfish, tilapia, whitefish, and salmon are just a few of the seafood items that Captain D's obtains from fish farms. The farm tilapia is especially worrisome because it is well known to be hazardous for the environment and your health. According to the New York Times, tilapia farms can harm local ecosystems by dumping a lot of fish waste into them. Some fish may be given hormone treatments like testosterone, and the fish themselves don't have a lot of the beneficial omega-3 fatty acids that other species do. However, especially during Lent, some buyers aren't slowing down because of the farmed fish. During those 40 days in the spring, many Catholics refrain from eating red and white meat on specific days leading up to Easter. There aren't many options available when you can't eat red or white meat, particularly when it comes to fast food. Fish can help with that. The chain's Lent is a major time of year, according to the same Captain D's head chef, with the 40 days having a noticeable and significant influence on sales. During Lent, regular customers patronize the restaurant more frequently, while new customers seek out Captain D's as an alternative to some of the other fishy fast food restaurants. These other options include something the chef unflatteringly refers to as a square fish patty that's pressed and molded which he notes Captain D's avoids in favor of providing diners with a variety of other fried and grilled fish meals. Over the course of its history, the name of the Captain D has been passed around a lot. According to the Nashville Business Journal, Shoney's Inc. went private and Dallas-based Lone Star Funds took over when the business was having trouble in the early 2000s. 308 Shoney's and 560 Captain D's locations were included in the takeover. Lone Star Funds pledged at the time to make a major investment in enhancing both businesses. However, Sentinel Capital Partners, a private equity firm, purchased the Captain D's trademark in 2017, at which point there were 530 outlets, according to 1851 franchise. Sentinel Capital Partners has experience in the restaurant industry and is involved with a number of fast food and fast casual establishments, including Taco Bell, Church's Chicken, Fazoli's, Pizza Hut, and TGI Fridays. The intention behind obtaining the name and concept was to take Captain D's to new places. According to Phil Greyfeld, CEO of Captain D, our brand has never been stronger. You'll notice that your fish comes with little crispy chunks of fried batter that accidentally fell into the fryer with the fish if you order Captain D's fried fish. As a result, a product known as Cracklins is created, and for some consumers, these crunchy remnants of batter are unquestionably the greatest part of a piece of Captain D's fried fish. However, it turns out that you can obtain the Cracklins without ordering the fish. You may order a side of the Cracklins to go with your Captain D's dinner, and you'll probably get them for free, according to Cafe Mom. Of course, you can eat them on their own or mix them into your salad for a tasty treat that is crispy, crunchy, and savory. And true, when you ask for the cracklins, they offer you a large container of what is effectively fried fat, as one Twitter user points out. However, as that Twitter user acknowledged, it can also taste amazing. With the introduction of a completely new restaurant concept named Captain D's Express in 2020, Captain D's has continued to make waves in the fast food business. This action reminds me a lot of Captain D's prior choice to reduce the size of its restaurant in the early 2000s. In fact, the new Captain D's Express is smaller than the regular Captain D's restaurants that are now open. Captain D's Express facilities have no indoor dining rooms at all and are built to fit on less than half an acre of land and urban environments. Instead, they provide drive through and walk-up windows, thus these establishments will exclusively serve takeaway. Since Captain D says that the size cuts franchisee beginning expenses by roughly a third compared to the larger restaurants, the outcome is a restaurant that is both more economical to manage and to start. Given Captain D's expansion of takeout and drive through service across the COVID-19 epidemic, the new design also performs admirably. In fact, this may not be such a bad decision after all, as ghost kitchens continue to appear and many diners assert they will continue to order delivery and takeout. For more fast food restaurant origins, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new content is uploaded.